Good. Oh, here. Yeah. Let me get uh, everything started on Facebook. Okay. Can you move closer Take to me? I guess I've got an armchair here. Come <laughs> into the picture. <laughs> yeah, this time I better get my new boots on. Making, they're making me do something new that I haven't had to do before, so it's taking me a second. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit closer. Okay. There. A little bit closer. There. Okay. So I can see you're here. <laughs> All right. Now we can go to Prelude. That's the St. John Divine. Yeah, this is a new composition, and uh, they gave us special permission to play it. Here we go. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Welcome, everyone. Um, if there's no announcements, there, well, there are some announcements in the bulletin, but uh, you can look those up later. And if we'll go ahead now to the call to worship. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. For he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of a runner. And the Lord takes pleasure in those who hope in his steadfast love. Praise the Lord. Thank you, John. Let us come together in prayer. Creator God, open our hearts in compassion and receive these petitions on behalf of the needs of the church and the world. You call us to love and serve you and our sisters and brothers with hearts, minds, and spirits. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Continuing with the call to confession, we try, but we always seem to come short of your expectations, dear Lord. Let us confess our sins together. Almighty God, you love us, but we do not love you fully. You call, but we do not always listen. We often walk away from neighbors in need wrapped in our own concerns. God of grace, help us to admit our sin so that as you move toward us in mercy, we may repent, turn to you, and receive forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. And let us continue for a moment in silent personal confession. Sisters and brothers, the Lord of heaven knows all our actions and all our prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And let us go to a gallery view and share the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also, and also with you. With you. Also with you. With, with all of you. you. Peace, everyone. With you. Peace. Peace, peace be with you, everyone. Peace. Peace with you. And uh, can we have the uh, Gloria Patri, please? is number 531 from the red hymnal if you're following oh love that will not let me go um. 
Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. I don't know that we have uh, any children in attendance. I haven't seen any yet, but uh, as I've said before, we're all God's children. And uh, I should have had James make a slide of this, uh, and it's my fault that I didn't. Uh, but it's a stained glass window from a church in Africa. And you see Jesus depicted there, surrounded by faith and hope and love and peace, and all sorts of people looking up at him in the window. And it's really a different look than what we're probably used to the image of Jesus. But Jesus is a lot of things to a lot of people. And that's what's important, because he's important to everyone. And we just need to keep that in mind as we go about our daily lives. And that's all I have to say about that today. Let's have a quick prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be together, to serve you, to welcome you into our hearts. And we ask that you, you remain in our hearts and minds as we go about our daily work in this week to come and in all those weeks ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Continuing on with our Old Testament reading, Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 21 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you, to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants are as grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens as a curtain and spreads them out as a tent to dwell in. He brings the princes to nothing. He makes the judges of the earth meaningless. Scarcely shall they be planted, scarcely shall they be sown, 
scarcely shall their tree take root in the earth when he will also blow on them and they will wither and the whirlwind will take them away as stubble. To whom then will you liken me that I should be equal to him, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things, who brings out their number, their host by number. He calls them by name, by the greatness of his might and the strength of his power. Not one of them is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and assert, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my justice escapes the notice of my God? Have you not known, have you not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not faint, nor is he weary? His understanding is inscrutable. He gives power to the faint, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings, with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Here ends today's Old Testament reading. Continuing with the New Testament. From the book of Mark, chapters, or excuse me, chapter 1, verse 29 through 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the service, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. Here ends today's New Testament scripture. Thank you, John. So, when Jesus and his four disciples leave the synagogue, they go the short distance to Simon's house, where his mother-in-law is very ill with a fever. There is a house today, almost next door to the synagogue in Capernaum, that many people say is that very house. Have you ever wondered about Simon's mother-in-law when there's no mention of Simon's wife? Oh well, she's here as part of this week's story. Indeed, we're all part of a story, each of us a thread that is woven into the tapestry of faith that God creates like a huge curtain, a tent, as Isaiah says in our Old Testament lesson for today. But let's go back to that house in Capernaum, because Jesus quickly cures the woman's fever, and before you know it, she is up and around, rushing out to the kitchen to whip up something to serve her guests. In our time of struggling for racial equality and gender equality, some women get a bit annoyed at this passage where the woman is immediately up and serving. The Greek word is diakini, which means to serve or more literally to wait upon, which may give some women even more reason to be annoyed. By the way, that Greek word diakino is the root of our word for deacons, those who serve. Now, you might wonder if this woman, Simon's mother-in-law, became one of the women who followed Jesus. We often think of Jesus and his disciples as this band of 12 following their master, but many times the Gospels allow for others as part of the group, and women were most certainly among them. In the 15th chapter of Mark, 
It's the female followers who observe the crucifixion from a distance after the males have all run away into hiding. We don't know if Simon's mother-in-law was among them, but she could well have been. And immediately after this, Mark says that these women had followed Jesus and served and had come from Galilee to Jerusalem with him. And where do you suppose Mark got this story from? We think that this gospel was written by a man named John Mark, who followed, uh, was a follower of Paul and accompanied him on at least one of his first journeys. And this was written about 40 years after the crucifixion, or about 10 or 12 years after Paul's letters. Since Mark knew Paul, it stands to reason that he also knew Peter, and possibly it's Simon Peter, now known just as Peter, who told him the story of the mother-in-law. We certainly don't know anything about Simon Peter's wife now, do we? In the third and especially the fourth century of our common era, the role of women in the church was minimized almost to the point of extinction. But look at the epistles of Paul, where women as church leaders are often referred to, and Paul even addresses some of his letters to women in various congregations. So back then, women were valued and highly respected in their work for the church. And it was only centuries later, when men were all in contention for the greater power of the church, that women were sidelined and their influence minimized. But according to Acts chapter 16, Lydia was a successful businesswoman, a dye merchant specializing in purple dye, the most expensive. And she was instrumental in establishing the church at Philippi, as was Priscilla in Corinth. Though I wonder how she felt about some of that stuff that Paul said in his letters about women being subservient to men. And there was Tabitha, who spent her life making clothes for the poorest people. And by that, she was well loved. When she died, the entire community was devastated. And when some learned that Peter was nearby, they went to see him to ask for help in their mourning. Peter went to see the body of Tabitha, and he raised her from the dead. And what about Phoebe, who was so highly regarded by Paul that he entrusted her to be his messenger to the church at Rome? A deaconess and a leader in her own church, she risked persecution and possibly even death to be a missionary throughout Rome and the western part of the Roman Empire. All these women were heroines of the cause of Christ before the Gospels were even written, and we remember them because of Paul's incredibly high regard for them. So much for minimizing women and their work, but the gospel goes on to describe all the people who then came in for healing and for releasing these demons. Some of these demons knew his name, but he didn't allow them to call it out as they had in the synagogue from our lesson last week, because he didn't want to be called the Holy One of God. And when he had gone out alone to pray in the early morning before before sunrise, Simon and the others went searching and they found him. And they said, hey, everybody's looking for you. And that's when Jesus announces that this is why he started this whole thing, to pronounce the good news and set about the healing, which he does throughout Galilee as his ministry takes off at full speed. This reading from Isaiah today contains some of the most poetic phrases in the entire Bible, and it predicts the message of God's grace that will be embodied in Jesus. First, Isaiah calls us to attention. Have you not heard? Have you not known? Don't you realize that God has immense power? The other day, someone asked me about whether or not I am a God-fearing man. And I replied, absolutely because I have no fear of God. That stumped him for a minute. And then I said, God-fearing in the translation from the Hebrew doesn't mean you're afraid of God. It means you're in awe of God and his power. That's what God-fearing actually means. And this, in this passage, God's incredible care for us, stretching the heavens over us tiny insects and who asks us to look up to the stars and see that God has named every one of those. 
Have you not known? Have you not heard? He is the creator of the ends of the earth and beyond to the very edges of the universe. Now, these words were written when the nation of Israel was being delivered a second time as they were sent back to Jerusalem from their captivity in Babylon after about 50 years, reflecting the previous exodus from Egypt and reminding the people how they should be grateful for the power of God to watch over them, not just in times of trouble, but in every time under heaven. And in those final verses of today's reading, we find the inspiration of football locker rooms and living rooms throughout our country today, where we will all be mindful later as we watch those young persons who will not faint or be weary, but will seem to rise up with wings like eagles as they run and not be weary. Now, those words were most valuable a couple of years ago when Philadelphians had a stake in the Super Bowl and rising up with those wings like eagles. And it's been nearly 10 years since we New Yorkers could reach back to Genesis and say there were at that time giants in the earth. No, the Super Bowl does not merit some biblical standard, despite our cultural standards these days. Since this passage really talks about how the older generations of Israel returned to Jerusalem from Babylon, seeing total destruction and asking for support from a younger generation to begin all over again. So you ask, what's in all of this for us today? In deliverance from the captivity of a horrible disease with treatment that may bring us hope and healing? With renewed energy to help and heal those less fortunate than ourselves, even as we sometimes question our own energies? That's what Jesus does when he slides out in early morning to be alone and to pray and to conclude that his mission is at hand. These things are what we all aspire to in our own journeys in faith. And from the days of Isaiah to this one, they still hold true. As Jesus realized when he went out that early morning to reflect and to pray, he knew that the time had come for him to deliver the message of hope and healing to Galilee, then to Jerusalem, and on to the world. And may we all follow in that pathway of hope and healing and life and love. And to my sisters and brothers in faith, may you all know that I share these thoughts and words with you today by the love of the Father, the grace of the Son, and the healing power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Excuse me. My bullet then flew away. We come now to the prayers of the people. Let us pray. Oh, excuse me, before we do that, I'm sorry. Uh, forgive me. Nancy, do we have some, uh, we have some people that we uh, need to ask for special prayer today? Nancy? Sorry. We've been praying for John and Ruth Smith and their granddaughter-in-law, also Phyllis DePerna, Joyce Small, Charlotte Phillips, Dana Steitler, and Mary Ellen Wright. Thank you, Nancy. Now let us come together in prayer and my apologies for that. Holy God of all creation, without your wisdom, we would be speechless. Without your peace, we would be heartless. Without your presence, we would be graceless. We hunger for power, and you feed us the bread of humility. We long for freedom, and you invite us to drink the cup of self-denial. Faithful and just God, our songs of gratitude will echo down the hallways of creation. Bearer of truth, our songs of praise will echo down the hallway of our hearts, and our songs of joy will echo through the hallways of eternity. And we ask for special blessings on those we name here, for John and Ruth and their granddaughter-in-law, for Phyllis, and Joyce, and Charlotte, for Dana, for Mary Ellen. 
Uh, also, we ask for special prayers for those victims of violent abuse, domestic and sexual. And Lord, we pray for those in our own hearts whose names you already know for their own healing and comfort. In your name and that of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We invite you to join in the sacrament of Holy Communion. And we, I hope that you have had a chance to uh, gather your own elements together in your own home to share with us. And be, being mindful that this is not our table, this is the Lord's table. And he shares it with all of us by his grace. So let us first have a communion prayer. We thank you, Father, for that life which you have made to, known to us by Jesus, your Son, by whom you made all things and take care of the whole world. You sent him to become man for our salvation. You allowed him to suffer and to die. You raised him up, glorified him, and have set him at your right hand, and in him you have promised us the life eternal. O Lord Almighty, eternal God, gather together your church from the ends of the earth into your kingdom, as grain was once scattered and now has become one loaf. Our Father, we also thank you for the precious blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed for us and for his precious body, as himself appointed us to proclaim his death. For through him, glory is to be given to you forever. Seeing your children in bondage and despair, you brought them to freedom by your compassion and hope. Longing to create a people who would care for one another, you spoke triple, simple truths about integrity and justice. Fill our worship with size more precious than all we value, dearest creator. You came not to build a grand scheme, but to be our foundation of faith. 
You came not to choose sides like we do, but to be that peace which brings us together. You came not worrying about what lay ahead of you so we could see your kingdom prepared for us. Fill our worship with your grace more precious than our deepest fears, great comforter. When we cling to all that holds us back, you empty our arms, putting our past in a rummage sale. When we hesitate to stand with the lost, you nudge us forward with the wind of justice. Fill our worship with your peace more precious than the brokenness we grasp. Word of wisdom in Christ we pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters in faith, I share with you what has been shared since the very beginning. On that last night that he sat at the table with his disciples, he took bread from the table and he blessed it and then he broke it saying, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat it, remember me. In a similar manner toward the end of the meal, he took the cup and after he had blessed it, he said, this is my blood, a new covenant to be shed with my blood and shared with you. Whenever you drink this, remember me for I will not drink it again until I share it new with you in my Father's kingdom. The gifts of God for the children of God by the grace of God. So take, eat. It represents the body of our Savior. This is the cup of redemption, of salvation. Drink of it. Drink your fill. It represents the blood shed for us. Now that we have shared in this feast, let's come together once more in prayer. Dear Lord, thanks and praise to you. Again, you have fed us at your holy table with your body and blood. By your word and this holy supper, may we be led from this world of sorrow into life eternal. Amen. Our offertory anthem today is another one from the archives of the Union Chancel Choir.
You can support the work of Union Church by mailing donations to 44 Balmville Road, Newburgh, New York, 12550, or visit newburghpresby.org slash donate to donate online. Continuing with a minute for mission, um, I know that a uh, number of folks in the church here are very active in the food pantry, and as the weather improves, there will be other opportunities to participate locally, hopefully with the diminishing COVID of uh, Habitat for Humanity and Presby Build and uh, informal donations through different individuals in the church that connect them to Newburgh local needs. There's also worldwide activities Union Church participates in that might be familiar, Operation Christmas Child, One Great Hour of Sharing Through Presbyterian Church, which and I was looking on the Presbyterian Church website, I found out they, uh, for a minute for mission for today, which they have some suggestions to mention, there's a Presbyterian uh, Council that helps with endorsing or certifying military chaplains and has been doing this since the founding of our nation. Um, in addition to these large ways, though, of mission, there's also a personal way that we can all do something and might be a little, especially for folks that may be a little less comfortable discussing their faith on a regular basis, but it was modeled by Jesus. And I see this very often in Union Church as well. And it's a great need now with COVID-19 kind of making everybody a little stressed out and magnifying economic hardship and loss of loved ones. And that is, and it's free, it's open to all ages, and that's kindness. And just to smile and treat each other kindly. I think we, we all need a little bit of that these days. I need to do a better job of that. And as it says in Proverbs 15.1, a gentle answer turns away wrath. Thank you. Thank you, John. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the gifts you have given us. And we ask that you share your love for us as we share our gifts with those less fortunate. And may we put it to the best use that we can in our efforts for your cause and for that of Jesus. Amen. Our doxology is by the Union Chancel Choir. of God, the grace of his son Jesus, go with you and yours as you go from here to the larger world to do his greater work for all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Before our postlude, I, I have to apologize. I neglected uh, the announcements, but you can all see them in your bulletin and we'll be going to virtual coffee hour after the postlude. But there's also an attachment to your bulletin uh, from uh, from the from uh, Independent Living Inc., uh, which has a hotline for mental health help. If you know of anyone who is suffering and has some stress needs, uh, they have counselors there, and it's a completely free service. Just call them up, and uh, if you can't find their number, you dial three one one, and you'll be put through to them. For anyone of you or anyone you know that may need some extra help and counseling or you can also call me. James, can we have our post lead, please?
Hello, everyone. 